Hi everyone, my name is Espen and I'm going to briefly introduce the IDA plugin for VASP called, as you might suspect, IDA VASP. First, a bit of context. The Vienna Ab Initial Simulation Package, or VASP, offers the materials modeling, community, methods, such as density functional theory, RTFOC, and Green's functions. It is a widely adopted code written in Fortran and is typically executed on high performance compute facilities. IDA VASP facilitates an interface between IDA and VASP. In the IDA ecosystem, it is referred to as a plugin. IDA VASP tries to reuse as much as possible of the existing IDA infrastructure and code. It is inspired by the earlier versions of the IDA plugin for Quantum Espresso, another code that also offers tool chains for the materials modeling community. Plugins that interface with codes have a few key elements for them to be useful. In particular, the input and output parsers, which in this case makes it possible to interact with VASP and its produced results. As such, the parser framework is a separate component in IDA VASP, making it possible to utilize the parser components also outside the plugin. So, what are the benefits of using IDA VASP or interacting with VASP directly? In general, it yields access to the IDA framework, providing functionalities such as data provenance, reproducibility, workflow design and execution. Having the possibility to automate either the same calculation on multiple structures and or a chain of calculations necessary to reach a certain property or accuracy is becoming more and more important as the complexity of our problems increase. Multiscale and multi-code workflows can now be constructed in a reliable and reproducible manner. It is also possible to build and prototype processing, visualizations and graphical user interfaces. Going forward, we will most likely also discover new and useful benefits and ways to use these plugins. I would like to point out a few important aspects and details that a user of IDA VASP will encounter. First, the main entry point when using IDA VASP is the VASP work chain. In practice, this means that if you want to launch a single VASP calculation, you should interact and submit the VASP work chain. We will briefly look at this in the example later. Secondly, in the plugin, we have two data structures for the potential data. Remember that the potential data or the podcast files in VASP is covered by a license. In order to make sure the licensed data is not stored or copied except only when needed, such a construction was necessary. In the data graph, only a hash and a submit the data is stored for each used potential. When IDA VASP launches a VASP calculation, it searches for the correct potentials using the hash and copies them to the execute directory. VASP calculations can thus be safely exported as they will not include potential data, only the hash. If such an export is imported and a calculation relaunched, the plugin expects to find the same potential identified using the hash. In addition, IDA VASP has the possibility to import VASP calculations that has not been executed in the plugin, preferably those where a podcar is present, to facilitate more detailed data provenance. In order to utilize IDA VASP, VASP potentials need to be uploaded. The plugin has dedicated commands for this, as is shown here. One typically enters the potential directory, which houses all the folders for the potentials, and executes for the data VASP podcar upload family and give the potential family a name here PB and a description. To get an overview of the uploaded potential families, you can execute for the data VASP podcar list families. The uploaded potential data will not be stored in the data graph or be part of any later export. Let us go through a very simple example the calculation of the total energies of the FCC silicon structure. In order to execute the workflow in IDA, we need to prepare its inputs and submit it to the IDA daemon. This can be done easily with a few lines of Python code. For IDA VASP, the main entry point, the VASP work chain, is itself a workflow. So we will use this as an example. First, we need to import a few dedicated IDA functions and load the default profile. Then we load the definition of the VASP work chain using the workflow factory, followed by setting up the code, structure, k points, parameters, potentials, and options such as resources, etc. The code to be loaded 
need to be configured using the IDA framework prior to executing this example. The dedicated IDA data structures can be loaded with a data factory. Finally, the VAS workchain and its associated inputs are submitted to the IDA daemon. We can now save this example and execute it with Python to get a feel for how this works. After the execution, we can inspect the last of the finished VASP workchain processes. Depending on your local configuration and code setup, the time to complete this example varies. In this particular case, running VASP on the same computer as IDA, the process should only take less than a minute to reach its finished state. We obtain the ID of the finished VASP workchain and the ID of its output node miscellaneous, which stores, for instance, the total energy in addition to other useful data, like if it has reached electronic convergence, etc. With this very simple example, you should now have a feel for how IDA VASP works. We encourage users to consult the documentation, which contains a tutorial section and additional details. It is important to emphasize that the plugin is not a black box and knowledge of ASP is necessary to produce sensible results. Also, the plugin should be able to perform all VASP calculations as long as the in-car flags are set correctly and that the parser can parse the generated output. The plugin already comes with a few bundled workflows, which we hope will grow in the future. Presently, the core development is handled by Bunan Su at Soshi Togo and myself. Parts of the work is financed by the Norwegian Resort Council. As with most things open source, the development is community driven. So please consider to contribute improvements to the public repository. And with that, I would like to conclude and thank you for your attention.